So in this video, we're going to focus on writing expressions that contains radicals into simplest form. But in this video, we're going to focus specifically on fractions. And so we're going to look at situations that contain fractions. And in the denominator of these fractions, we're going to see something like a rational number 5 plus or minus, doesn't matter which, a radical like the cubed root of 10. We know that we can't leave you know, radicals in the denominators. We're going to talk about what we do when there's something like addition or subtraction between that rational number and our radical, and how do we rewrite this expression or rewrite this entire fraction so that the denominator does not contain a radical within it. Now the last thing we're going to talk about here is what we do when we have a sum or difference involving a square root in a denominator. Now this focuses specifically on square roots. So this is something that is to the power of one half or has a two for its root. So this is a very specific strategy. But what we can do is that if we have a sum or a difference involving a square root in our denominator is we can multiply by something called the conjugate. Now the conjugate is a special relationship between two expressions where they contain the same first term. So here you see a times the square root of b and the same second term, so here you see c times the square root of d, and the difference is that one has a plus sign in between and one has a minus sign in between. And you're gonna see what happens on the next slide, that when we multiply by the conjugate, it will actually help us to strategically eliminate any square roots that might be in our denominator. So here if we take a look at example one, you'll notice that we have a square root in our denominator, and it has a sum which means that we're going to have to use that value called the conjugate in order to help us remove that square root. We can't simply just multiply by one single thing, like, you know, the square root of 6 and get the square root of 36. It doesn't work because that plus 3 is also there. So remember, your conjugate is the same thing, but it has a different symbol in between. So this plus symbol is going to change to a minus symbol. So your conjugate is going to be 3 minus the square root of 6. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply by the conjugate. So we're going to multiply the denominator by 3 minus the square root of 6. And we're also going to multiply the numerator by 3 minus the square root of 6. Because remember, we have to multiply this by 1. So we multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing. Now, I'm going to add some parentheses in down here. I might get a little bit confused. But what we're going to do is we're going to use big distribution, and we're going to multiply all of these items together. So if I start with the top here, I'm just going to utilize the distributive property. 5 times 3 would put 15 in my numerator, and then minus the 5 is on the outside, 5 squared is 6. So the 5 and the 6 can't be multiplied together. And that's simply because the 5 is not inside of a root and the 6 is. So they either both have to be inside or both have to be outside. Since they're one inside, one outside, they just stay one inside, one outside. Now, if we move on to this denominator, we're going to start with 3 times 3, which is 9. Then 3 times negative square root of 6, so that becomes a negative 3 square root of 6. Again, noticing 3 on the outside, 6 on the inside, because that's how they were to start. Then I take square root of 6 times 3, so that's plus 3 square root of 6. And then I end up with minus, I have the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. Well, that becomes the square root of 36. They're both underneath the root, so they get multiplied together. So now if I start to simplify things, well, my numerator stays the same. It says 15 minus 5 square root of 6. That doesn't simplify anymore. But what I notice down in my denominator is I notice that I have negative 3 squared to 6 and positive 3 squared to 6. Well, those add together to be 0. So those are now essentially gone because they canceled out. Then I still have the 9 minus the square root of 36 is a perfect square. I know the square root of 36 is 6, so that becomes 9 minus 6. So notice I was able to simplify my denominator to be something different. And now if I continue simplifying this, this turns out to be 15 minus 5 square root of 6 over 3. So notice that by multiplying by the conjugate, 
this special situation occurs where I get a plus or a minus, but they cancel out, and then I end up with this perfect square over here that evaluates. So my square roots are gone. So let's apply this same thinking one more time to this next example. So here again, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate because I notice I have a square root in my denominator and I notice that there's a sum or a difference, which in this case it's a difference. So I'm going to multiply by, remember it's 8, and then we change that negative to a plus, so it's the opposite sign, 2 square roots of 3. And then I'm going to multiply by that same expression in my numerator. So I'm going to start by adding in another set of parentheses here and then multiplying these out. So I'm going to start square root of 3 times 8. Well, my numerator becomes 8 out in front, square root of 3. Then I have plus, okay, 2 out in front, and then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, those are both underneath the root, so that becomes the square root of 9. All over, so I've multiplied those two out, 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 2 square root of 3, well, I can multiply the numbers together on the outside, so that becomes 8 times 2, which is plus 16 square root of 3. And then I have a negative 2 square root of 3 times 8. Well, negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 on the outside, square root of 3 on the inside. And then here, this next chunk, negative 2 times 2 becomes a negative 4. And then we have square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is 9. So there I was able to simplify it just a little bit. Now I notice, again, that this special situation occurs where these cancel. Out, so those are effectively gone. Then I start looking for any perfect squares that I can simplify further. Well, what I notice is that up in my numerator, I have the square root of 9. So that can be rewritten as 3. So my numerator becomes 8 square root of 3 plus 2 times 3. Then my denominator is 64 minus, well, this one also square root of 9 becomes 3. So that becomes minus 4 times 3. So now if I simplify these just a little bit further, this numerator becomes 8 square roots of 3 plus 6 over 64 minus 12, which I can simplify further because the denominator can be subtracted a little bit further. So that becomes 8 square roots of 3 plus 6 over 52. Now, technically, this is the right answer, but if you look at all of the coefficients or constants, so anything not inside of a root, you will notice that 8, 6, and 52 are all divisible by 2. So we can simplify this by dividing each term not in a root by 2. So this becomes 4 square roots of 3, plus 3, all over 26.